Thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, I'm just back and um, just been doing a lot more work on the vlog and uh, learning how to be a blogger, a vlogger, what it's going to take and uh, really what you guys, um, you know, want to see out of this. I've been um, making this for, you know, a multitude of reasons. Um, if you guys have watched some of the videos before, you know that we plan on going sailing. So we've been doing uh, things uh, along that route. And also, if you've been watching the video, you know that I've been in a really bad car accident this year. I'll go into that a little bit later, um, how that's affected my life. I'm with everybody. I want to hear from you guys. I uh, haven't had too many comments, but the ones I do have, I definitely always um, respond to the comments. So if you guys have any questions, comments, please uh, hit the subscribe button, smash that like for me. Really appreciate it. I'll probably say it again in the video, but I'm going to need as much support as we can get along the way. So um, I'm just kind of going to start fresh for you guys and um, give a background video information kind of um, uh, live stream. Uh, hopefully we get a couple people that join in at some point. If not, then uh, I'll check back in on the comments and I'll be back tomorrow. Um, I'm making this a commitment now. I know I said it once before that I was going to start making videos every day, but I'm really going to start making videos every day. Once a week, I'm going to be making a really good edited video maybe of our travels, of um, things that we're doing. And uh, I'll kind of go into that as well. So my name's Alex. Um, if you haven't already uh, seen any of the earlier videos, my wife's name is Natalia. Uh, we have two cats, Sputnik and Lady. Sputnik is the name of the first satellite that ever went into space. Um, and it was Russian, like Natalia. So, um, and Lady, that was uh, Natalia's cat's name. Because it was right when Natalia got to the United States, and um, I think she just liked the name Lady because it sounded good. But it stuck, and um, yeah, those are our kids right now. Um, a little background information for me. I am French. I came from France uh, when I was young uh, as a toddler. And um, my whole family is uh, was born in France, except for me. My dad was in the French Air Force uh, transitioning into civilian life when I was young. And when him, my mom, and my older brother, my mom was pregnant at the time. My brother was about one or two years old. They came here to the States, the United States and Washington State for a year to come check out the country, um, prospect for jobs, and kind of um, see where my dad wanted to take the family from there. So I was born here, went back to France for a few years, and then when we came back to the United States, I was like five or six years old, we moved to Washington until I was 10 years old, and then we moved to the Bay Area, to Pleasanton. Really great little small town, uh, not really small, 60,000 people, but just a good town for the Bay Area. Not high crime rate. It was, um, it was a pretty good town. Um, yeah, so went to Amador High School for a while, and... Um, Kind of got in a little bit of trouble when I was younger. So back up a little bit. When I was 12 years old, my parents split up and it really affected me. Like I was, I'm the middle child. My sister's two and a half years younger. My brother's about 20 months older. And it just really affected me. My brother kind of latched on to my dad and my sister with my mom. And I was kind of stuck in the middle. Um, my mom started seeing somebody else and I just wasn't comfortable with him. And so it really like distanced me from my mom um, for quite some time and still plays a factor in our relationship even now. We don't talk so often, which is something that I hope to improve, um, but that's just the way it is right now. And um, she lives out in Henderson right outside of Las Vegas. So when that happened, I started kind of like going to the streets and like finding friends. Um, and of course, as a child, you gravitate towards people that are naturally like you or in the same position as you or feel the same way about things as you do. And that's what I did. I just latched right on to about seven, eight friends and we rode our teenage years together, like ride or die. And um, started causing a lot of trouble. Went to juvenile hall when I was 17 for a really bad fight in which uh, two kids got seriously injured. And that kind of started, oh man, a really long road. Well, that definitely started like my alcoholism and um, my drug addictions. 
So I'll be the first to tell you that I've suffered since I was 17 years old um, with substances and alcohol. And um, I've had some years, uh, really good years in which I went to college and um, was sober and productive and uh, other years in which I met my wife and we've been together. Um, but these last two years, yeah, kind of, um, yeah, I slid back and I'll go into that a little bit more. But just to backtrack, I started using substances when I was like 17, 18 years old. And just right out of the gate, um, right after high school, which I didn't even graduate high school, I got kicked out of my high school and then eventually kicked out of the whole school district for that bad fight. And so after that, I got what's called a CHSPE, which is a California High School Proficiency Examination. With that, it's kind of like a GD if you're not 18 years old um, and you have to have your parents sign off on it. And it's, uh, it's the same credentials as a high school diploma, only in California, though. That's the only place it's valid. So I got that, got out of high school, like 16 years old, had my own job, had my own car. I was independent. I pretty much moved out when I was 16 years old. I'd go back periodically as life goes on uh, for an ill-equipped teenager trying to be an adult. Um, there were times that I needed to go back to my parents' house, and I did, and I'm extremely grateful for um, my dad. He's always, as long as I've been doing the right thing, he's always been there, been super supportive. Um, my dad's my hero. My dad is actually in school right now to be a Catholic deacon, which I think is like pretty awesome. If you're going to, you know, do what you love or do what you believe in, then, you know, try and make the best out of it. If anything, a profession. And um, my dad's done really amazing. He, uh, works for the Alameda County Jail Ministry Program. So he's actually the one that um, kind of made the whole program for all of the Bay Area. Um, so the church services that go into jails and talk to inmates that aren't normally able to get church services because they're in jail. My dad coordinates it so that he does, um, so that, you know, the church does the regular mass, seeing people, priests coming in, um, chaplains, and yeah, um, my dad has always been a really good role model for me, especially a person like me that really easily like gets off the path. And so I've been able to have that foundation and have that, like I said, role model and that example for me. And um, it's always been like my guiding light for me as my dad is I can always go to him for advice. And I know he's only going to tell me what he thinks is best for me, not what he likes or what he thinks is, you know, more profitable or going to make me happier, but what's actually best for me. And I fully trust my dad. So getting out of high school, uh, I messed around for a bit, just stayed in the Bay area. Um, and then when I was 19 years old, I left and went to Chico and I cleaned up my life a little bit. So for the six, seven years that I was there, I was about sober for about four, four and a half of them in Chico. And I went to Butte College and made it to Chico State. And then I got right back into substances. And after a year of Chico State, I dropped out. And that's where my life like really made a whole new chapter, which there's a whole another chapter to come after this. Um, but after leaving Chico, I checked into a rehab, uh, a detox first for alcohol, a detox off alcohol. And then I went to a rehab for three months. And I, when I came back out that time, I had like a whole new purpose and I knew that I didn't want to be the person that I was growing to be. And I wanted to, I want to be of usefulness to others. I love helping people out. I love being able to see the look in people's face after you've done something for them selflessly. And um, it gives something that helping others does is it gives you a sense of satisfaction that only that can do for you. Like, you can get different satisfactions different ways, but helping people selflessly just to help them out, it does something for us as human beings that I feel is, is really essential for one of our basic necessities, which is a sense of belonging or a sense of community. So in order to like fulfill that like basic sense of community and belonging, you need to have action. It doesn't just come upon you. You could be around, you know, Let's say you were around 20 people all the time. That was your herd. That was your community. But if you never did anything for them, you wouldn't feel a part of. You just kind of feel like you're using or you're being taken care of um, 
So when I learned how to kind of channel that energy channel, that necessity for helping others, it propelled my life in a way that I can't really describe. Um, it's, it's that it gave me a, a positive outlook on life and a way to be able to cope with other life problems that I wasn't able to before. So by helping others, it allowed me to like build that self-worth, that self-esteem, a good self-concept, but also it gave me momentum because I was doing things every day. So you're active, you're out, you're, you're not idle on the couch, which is the hardest thing to start off of. Like, for people that are like kind of in my position or trying to do something better for yourselves, like I know the hardest part is getting up off the couch and actually doing it. I feel that a lot of times when people set out to better their lives, they really stop at like 2%. And what I mean by that is that people, they, from the time of the first thought to the time of the completed like action or the thing that you want to complete, People that are doing things like better themselves, I say a lot of times stop at like 2%. They've thought about it. They put like the first step forward and then something came along or some thought came along and they just stopped um, because it got hard. And that's where like I've learned to persevere, to push through, to stay focused and to uh, be purposeful in my actions. Um Sorry, I just drew the biggest blank. So after, uh, so after Chico, um, so Chico is just a huge learning curve. I came out of, out of that though with a ton of new resources, um, going into rehab, getting out, and having a whole new fire for life. I'd say two years before I got sober, I met Natalia. So I was going to Chico. Uh, I was in Chico State when I first met Natalia. And I was just online and, you know, on Facebook where the people you may know shows up from your friends list that, you know, you might have in common. Well, I knew this one Russian girl in Chico State. I happened to be friends with her. And Natalia came up as one mutual friend, Natalia Alexandrovna Demidova. And she's just the most beautiful woman in the world. And uh, so I had to say hi. And she's like, do I know you? And I was like, no. And she had never been to the United States. She's from St. Petersburg. And from there, spent the next two years. Well, the first year I fucked up. I thought like when I first met Natalia, I had no like straight ambition. Like I am getting online. I'm meeting a Russian woman and I'm going to marry her one day. That's definitely not what it was. It's like I was online. So a beautiful woman. I started you know, contacting her and she wanted to talk to me. So I just kept talking to her. And the first six months, it was kind of just like, you know, I really like her. I, I liked her a lot, definitely. But like, how am I going to make this happen? Like, it, this is so unrealistic, right? Just like most people would think. But that's like where the shift in my life came for me after Chico. So after getting out of my rut, always, I am the most progressive, obviously, when I'm sober, clear minded, focused, don't have any distractions. And um, so when I had that time to focus, I put my focus on Natalia. And getting her to the United States, making our relationship good. And I spent about two years saving money, doing all the lawyer paperwork, didn't hire a lawyer, um, establishing a relationship, getting to know her. And, and eventually, March 9th, uh, 2018, she came. That day changed my life forever. I thought that I knew about commitment and I had no idea. I still like feel like I don't fully know. We're almost two years into our relationship. We're like year and i'd say eight months right now yep coming up on a year and eight months and um i i am learning to be a man on a daily basis for sure so again backtrack a little bit so natalia and i have been together now about straight for like a year because there's times when we were in our online relationship that we broke up and then she moved here and um, it was, I mean, the hardest thing, hands down, for both of us in, in our entire lives. So Natalia just, she knew basic English when she first met me and started learning more English when we started talking and over the years. She never had any formal English training or anything like that. And so she had to learn English coming here, 
completely foreign language from the uh, the Russian alphabet, which is like 33 characters, completely different. Um, the sounds that you use, the vocal cords you use for English, completely different. And she just had a lot of adapting to do. Not just that, the culture here is so much different. We are not people, people here in the United States. You have communities in Russia. And here we have individuals, for sure. I mean, yes, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of communities, there's families, there's big groups of people. But overall, we don't have that same camaraderie that is kind of shared like universally in Russia. Um, I think Russia's like camaraderie is like, we survive tough winter together, so we are one for the motherland. Um, that's their like niche. And it, and it really, it's, it's Russia's identity as, you know, the first thing you think about when you think about Russians. Um, but Natalia getting here, I saw her commitment to me and even, I knew I loved her before she got here, but I fell in love with her when she, when we started having our relationship face to face. She takes care of me unconditionally. She always wants the best for me. Um, she's always willing to help me be a better person. Uh, she's adventuresome, loves traveling, is the best co-pilot, like doesn't complain, doesn't pee ever. I don't know how. Um, always willing to help me out in the car or wherever we're going. So we do really well um, together. Um, but we have our differences for sure. We are two completely opposite personalities. You might not even see her on a video for like the next two months even, maybe even. Well, I know you've seen her a little bit, but like on a long video talking. Um, but I'll get her on here. You guys just send the requests in, put in the comments. We want to hear from your wife. I'll get her on here um, and hit that like and subscribe button. Um, so we've been doing really good. Um, well, hold on. We just got through just like two days yesterday and today. We just got through another serious bout in our relationship where in January of this year, 2020, this year has been more than a clusterfuck for us. I mean, I understand how it's been for a lot of people. I understand losing homes, lo losing loved ones. Um, it's been it's been pretty dire for us as well. So I broke my neck January 3rd. I was rear-ended in a car accident, which somebody was going like 50 miles an hour, and I was dead at a stoplight and broke my neck, broke a rib in my chest, broke uh, a bone in my ankle, feel like tore ligaments and stuff um that got all better but um i got right back into my opiate addiction and that was scary that was like four months of me going full on off the deep end and um completely irritable completely complete asshole all the time um unable to manage my own life unable to manage any anything let alone take care of a marriage and a household and yeah, you know, the bills are paid for and, and everything, but I wasn't there and I lost myself again. I thought that I'd built up. First of all, anytime that I'd been sober, I'd been going to meetings. Everybody knows what kind of meetings I'm talking about. They like to stay anonymous. Um, and when I do so, I am just so much different of a person because on a regular basis, I get a reprieve and able to like talk out all the shit that's constantly in my mind. Like I'm already 20 minutes into this video. I'm wondering if it's going to be a half hour, if anybody's actually ever going to watch a full half hour of me talking. But um, it, it really, allowed, really allowed me to just speak my mind on a regular basis and also hear other people's perspective and problems and how they deal with them. And it's just a great support system altogether. And when I don't use that, and I think that I can do it all on my own, is when I get this ego about me and I do everything wrong. And eventually I start trying to like subside feelings and it started off with like weed again this time. And I smoked weed for a long time without drinking. But then when I broke my neck and I got into opiates, it was right back to drinking. And uh, so I got off opiates like April, May, and I kept drinking and I, and I drink pretty regular. I don't get like sloshy, too sloshy drunk. Or I'm like falling all over the place and stuff. I'll slur my words when I get over the edge a little bit. Um, but I just drink on a regular basis, just calm drinking, and it's just to subside everything that I'm thinking. Um, that and and it's just completely destructive behavior. Um, I know what it's like to relapse and to look at, look at it and say like, yeah, I'd rather be doing this than putting up the fight, which is pretty scary. I'm lucky though to have the family that I do, uh, the wife that I do. 
and just also that I've been given like resources in the past and know where to go when I need the help. So I'm back at it, back at the meetings, feeling really good about it. Um, doing everything that I need to for me to be mentally healthy because when my, my mental health comes, that's when I'm able to do all the how to's like how to start from square one. So that's, it's like really exciting for me because it's like a new chapter. We're not starting like terribly off, but at the same time, we're, I'd rather be in a, a much different place. So that's where the hard work is going to come in. We have a lot of um, things to do coming up for our plans. Um, so what I call the plan, uh, the plan is that middle of this next upcoming year, we want to be on a sailboat full time, living aboard and taking our cats, not only traveling, but going out and doing just anything resourceful for other people, whether it be being of service to people that also deal with substances. We want to uh, go to foreign countries first, uh, head down to Mexico and then see where we go from there, whether east or west. But we want to go and um, help someone in some way, whether it be teaching them a skill, donating them something. Um, just, uh, giving in one way or another, um, maybe introducing them to resources or, um, just whatever it may be. I want to be of help to people in other countries that don't have as much as we do. And I don't want to, I don't want to do it. I've been a part of, um, a lot of churches and a lot of nonprofit organizations done a lot of volunteer work throughout the Bay area. But I want to do this on my own as um, something that is solely from us, you know, not being contributed to um, by other companies. Um, if we get sponsorship, of course, we'll take, you know, we'll take that along the way. Or if uh, companies want to directly donate and we go be the ones to facilitate that, then then that could definitely be an avenue. But the thing that we want is to have full control over the people that we choose because it's going to be a very selective process. We're not just going to pull up on shore one day and pick somebody that we see that looks poor and just say, Hey, here you want 10,000 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's not how we want to do it. We want to go to other countries, meet families, meet communities, meet um, everybody in, in, in that area and kind of get a feel for, um, you know, what kind of people there are out there and who needs it most and how we could be of most benefit to the most amount of people that are deserving and, and, and also wanting to work hard for it because even things I know personally that you, things that are a handout only last that, as long as that handout lasts. And then you, you got to have something for them to continue to live on or to build on. And, and that's kind of where we want to go with that. Um, a lot of plans to be made along the way. A lot of people to talk to, um, we'll be reaching out to companies, um, you know, hopefully for endorsements or, more so just like sponsorships, um, you know, uh, giving companies the incentive of showing their product or their services on our channel in order to further fund our trip to help people. Um, also along the way, we're gonna be doing travel videos. Wherever we go, we wanna show people the not so touristy parts of countries that um, are popularly you know, visited. So, we don't want to go to the Cabo or, um, you know, straight to the Bahamas, but more get in depth with the communities and the, um, the culture there um, to get a, a real feel for people's everyday life. Um, what's their purpose? What do they like to do? Their recreation, their fun, and um, kind of be able to share that through YouTube to give people the experience of, you know, not just the the tourism side of it, but but how people are on a daily basis. What would you feel like next to this person? Um, another thing, um, another thing. So there's there's so many different factors to the plan. So there's the purpose, what we want to do with it, um, which is you know helping other people, traveling along the way. What we need to do in order to get there is the major part of it for the next however long it takes. So we've already been on the water. I've been on the water uh, a lot in my life. Um, I haven't captained or uh, 
been uh, at the helm of a ton of ships, but I've definitely been on the water. I'm comfortable on the water. And we uh, already took our first sailing courses. We have friends that own a sailboat, so we're going to get on the water as much as possible. But we definitely know that we need as much ex experience as possible before the time comes that we leave. Um, and that's going to require probably for us to get a boat. I don't know. I'm hoping in the February, March kind of time frame and get a couple months to really get acquainted with our boat and then be able to take it out. Um, we're also going to be training the cats, which is a huge part of our lives. So Sputnik's always, Sputnik is literally a dog. Like everybody thinks that he is a dog when they see him with me outside. He's, he walks, he goes on walks. He walks with me without a leash. Um, he, uh, comes on command. He'll climb trees on command. He fetches on command and he's just overall like super obedient. We trained him and he's still in the process of training. So we're doing a lot of cat training right now in the car, getting him used to being mobile and everything and, and, um, getting comfortable with leaving their environment, um, for short periods of time right now. And over this next six months, it'll grow. And hopefully when the time comes that they get to the boat, they'll be able to adapt rather quickly. Um, but I think they're going to be pretty good. Another thing is our finances, of course. I'm sure that's everybody's question for the last 26 minutes that I've been talking is, how are you guys going to afford this? So we have a little bit of money saved, definitely not even enough to buy a boat, but um, I'm working. Um, Natalia's job kind of just ended because of the season. We're no longer in banquet season. She's a banquet server, so I'm sure she's going to be looking for work pretty soon. But we are just from now until... Oh, April, May, or whenever it may be that we leave, we are penny pinching. We are going to be saving every dollar that we can. And for me, it, it's like Natalia doesn't spend that much money to begin with, but I just quit my drinking and my smoking. I'll probably quit vaping pretty soon, which is going to be the tough one, like really tough. And just really minimizing our costs down to saving everything that we can. We're also trading stocks, which we're doing pretty well in um made a couple thousand since we started that about a few months ago but i really hope to capitalize on that and, and get better um i'm doing fairly well right now but i definitely see how like my growth is getting exponential like a good stock it's like it started slow and then when i started learning more and more things start clicking in the trading world you start knowing what to look for what to listen for what to keep an eye out for um what to buy and sell <laughs> what to hold um so all those things have been really helpful, and that's a really good skill that I'm picking up. But um, I want to hear from you guys about what skills uh, would you suggest for me to pick up along the way as well. Um, I'm going to be writing. So I draw a little bit, and I write. Um, I don't know. It was a piece that I did. Do that guy right there. Well, back for Natalia. Kind of artistic-y. <laughs> yeah, the nautical thing, uh, cliche, right? But that's that's it, that kind of plays into everything that um, I'm working towards. Is I've always been somebody that's in love with the ocean, the freedom of the ocean. Um, I'm not one to be in the same location for even like two or three years. So if I was to be able to find, you know, a solution where having a mobile home that can change environments. For a person like me, who like I constantly need some kind of stimuli, uh, stimulation or some kind of newness in my life, um, I get bored really easily. And if I'm not like regularly being challenged or regularly seeking out new things to do, then that's when I get my idle hands that play in the devil's playground. So, yeah, overall... Um, that's our that's our plan and it's a lot that's a lot to do but that's the whole idea behind possible i came up with possible because it's two things it's make it happen make it possible and to make it big make it bold so to make it possible and to make it bold is to be possible um and i've kind of feel like i've lived that when i've you know obviously been doing doing what I need to do on a regular basis. And it's just kind of part of my character is if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And whatever it takes, I'm going to find a way to get it done. And um, because 
usually what it is that I want to do, it's n- not just for myself. Um, it's for other people. And so I find great satisfaction in helping other people, like, like you heard me say earlier. Um, I think that everybody could learn from some kind of selfless giving. And if we can start a channel that kind of gives somebody hope out there to not just look at themselves and like look at their life, but see how they could be of help for somebody else that day. Like I'm not in the best position in the world right now, but I know that this video can help somebody. And if you can kind of keep that mindset with whatever you're doing, like you help so many people along the way, but not just that, you gain resources and you gain a community and you gain positive energy from everything that you do and you carry that with you. And that's what I want to carry with me. So uh, once again, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, just make sure to leave a comment. I check my comments every day. I'm going to be on my videos every single day, whether it be a a short 10 minute video or something longer like this. And then I'm going to start editing my videos a lot better for you guys. I know this is just my basic, got the football in the background, really boring. I just wanted to get some content out there so you guys know that I'm I'm putting it on here. And and this is what I want to dedicate myself to is, uh, you know, um, being on channel and, and kind of broadcasting um, our plan and, and our goals because I know that like when I thought of a plan like this, I never thought of like exactly one person who's done it. I mean, yes, we have the Vagabond couple who are just phenomenal. They've been around like five years, but I didn't even know of them until I started searching for couples that sail. Um, and then when people see these kinds of things that, that other people are doing, like sailing or something that's like, quote unquote, not the norm. A lot of people believe like it's impossible to achieve or that, you know, they could never do it. But I kind of want to just be the example that whatever it is, you can do it. Um, Given, you know, obviously there's certain things that some people can't do. Um, If you're seven foot, you cannot be a commercial pilot. Like, I think that's a thing, Um, you know, so, but the things that people aspire to do, they usually believe that they can. They just stop themselves along, along the way. So I'm here to tell you, don't stop yourself. Believe in yourself like we are believing in us. It's amazing that Natalia's even still with me through all the shit that we've gone through this year of uh, financial insecurity, me breaking my neck, just the emotional trauma, me going through the PTSD, her learning a, a whole new country and a whole new way of life and um, not having anybody out here, any resources except for the friends that she's made. But we are here to tell you that it's possible. You know, you just got to do it. Thanks for your time, everybody. Make sure to uh, leave some kind of comment, like, or or something so I can get back to you. Um, Yeah, see you tomorrow.